this is Chris from Cassette Talk, and so today I'm going to talk about tapes for one of the few times. And so Low Noise Jason Skills did a cassette tag, and I was thinking, oh, I'm not a cassette collector, even though I have remnants of my uh, collection from the 1980s, mostly bought when I was a teenager. But I looked through the questions, and I can actually answer most of them, so I'm going to give it a go. Uh, question number one, a tape from 2022. Oh, okay, so here's one we're going to fail on. I will later on show the one tape that I bought in 2022. It was music that was released in 2020, so it is recent stuff. I'm going to use it to answer a different question. Number two, a punk or new wave tape. I'm going to go with the Dead Milkman, Big Lizard in My Backyard. And you know, those classics like Beach Song and Bitchin' Camaro and Tiny Town and Right Wing Pigeons from Outer Space. That's good stuff. Uh, a metal or hard rock tape. So I sold off most of my metal tapes when I became a, uh, kind of an indie, indie alternative snob, but some of them I still have. I still have Queensryche The Warning. And so this was, I think this was their, I mean, they had their EP, but this was their first full length album from 1984. Pretty sure I bought it at the hometown Kmart. I don't have any tapes that are still sealed, so I have to skip that question. Most experimental tape, this was something I had received in BCLT maybe a year, year and a half ago. Uh, so the, the font's tiny. They're called Pedestrian Deposit. Um, the album's called The Architecture. So this is described as sort of experimental, modern, classical, music concrete uh, noise. So uh, pretty avant-garde sort of stuff. Uh, from Sean of many names when he sent me um, a batch of stuff. A tape from the 1980s. Well, that's frankly going to describe most of what I'm going to show. Um, so I'm not going to show this for any of the other questions. So this is Susie and the Banshee Peep Show. This was actually my entry into the world of Susie and the Banshees, who became one of my favorite groups. We got them a little bit late in the U.S., uh, hip hop or R&B tape. I'm going to show uh, my favorite public enemy. It takes a nation of millions to hold us back. And so I, I remember listening to this one a lot of um, classic, that golden era hip hop's about all I know about hip hop and public enemy was definitely one of my favorites from that. A tape you have on CD or vinyl as well. I'm not going to go with the full hat trick, but um, Lou Reed, New York. So here I have it on cassette um, that I got. This one, I would have gotten this in college, probably 89, 90. And, but I have this on album vinyl now as well. Your most expensive or valuable tape? Well, I'll be honest, I don't have all my tapes entered into Discogs. Some of them are. I'm going by the highest Discogs median. So it's this cassette sampler of the God Machine from 1993 on Fiction Records. And you're saying, how did I get my hands on this? Well, I used to subscribe to Alternative Press Magazine. Um, and what they would do is every month when they sent you your magazine, um, it would be sort of sealed in cellophane and they would usually stick in some sort of promo single or CD single because obviously record companies sent them all these promo stuff and they didn't have uh, I don't even think they listened to them. They just sent them off to us. A techno, electronic, or synth tape? My plan was to show my Pet Shop Boys, but I can't find it, so I'm guessing that is something I've lost over the years. So I'm going to show a Depeche Mode, uh, Songs of Faith and Devotion. Um, so again, I think this was one of the early 90s. Um, yeah, 1993, Depeche Mode. Albums, a tape you bought at a show. Well, I show this one a lot because it's the only tape I ever bought at a show. So this is this group Spurge. Uh, so they were from Billings, Montana. They were sort of sort of funk alternative rock, a little bit like the Red Hot Chili Peppers or Faith No More. Um, I do know that this has sold for $20. Um, the God Machine its Discogs median was 24. Um, this one has a median of 20. Somebody right now is trying to sell it for $132. It's not me. I don't think that person is going to succeed in that. 
a tape with a colored shell. Well, I really couldn't find anything besides sort of the normal uh, clear shells or white shells or black shells. Um, so this is the this was the tape I bought in 2022. So you can see it's in a green translucent shell. So I'm guessing like vinyl. This is some maybe something that's become more commonplace. So this is something I bought off Bandcamp. So I actually bought one cassette off of Bandcamp. Uh, the font's impossible to read, but the group is called Inconvenience Store. So it's sort of, it's sort of noise, experimental, hardcore. Um, so it was. I bought it in 2022. This music was released in the year 2020. An import tape from a country other than your own. So I'm going to show this concert and curiosity um, by The Cure. Um, so this is a German pressing. So one side has live Cure stuff uh, from 1984. And then the second side, Cure Anomaly. So this is like B-sides and demos and various odds and ends from the 77 to 84 time period. And I think this is pretty close to being my most valuable as well. Uh, will you buy more tapes in 2023? Probably not. If so, it'll be very limited. Um, and a lot of the reason why is my answer to the next question. Uh, what do you um, listen to tapes on? Well, the only thing I have to listen to tapes on is this cheapo Sony boombox. This is something I bought recently in the last couple of years. So it's got a CD deck, although I have a better CD player. It's got a cassette deck. This is literally the only way I have to play cassettes right now. And it's frankly not that great. If I was going to get seriously back into cassettes, I would actually need to pick up a halfway decent vintage deck. Um, and I don't think that's something that I care about cassettes enough to do. Um, show a mixtape or blank tape. So I'm going to show a mixtape. And this is a self-made mixtape called Best of Reggae Volume 1. And yes, I was enough of a nerd at some point in my life to actually type up all of that. And so the story here was when I was about 16 or 17, somebody told me I would like reggae, so I went to investigate it. Obviously, I you, know, you can tell I'm old enough that this was obviously way before streaming, so you couldn't find a reggae uh, playlist. Um, so once a week, there was a show on a public radio station where a guy basically for a couple hours uh, spun reggae records, and so I just recorded it off the radio. And so obviously I was at the mercy of what he decided to play. So you can see there's Third World, uh, Fishbones kind of pushing the reggae, Steel Pulse, Black Aruhu, Burning Spear, those sorts of things. A little bit more commercial, there was a, a UB40. Notice that he didn't play any Bob Marley, at least that particular day. And I have a few other uh, cassettes like this. There was also a punk and alternative show that I would tape sometimes as well. Um... Show an album you would like to have on tape or a tape you want on vinyl. I'm going to show a tape I want on vinyl. So third base, the Cactus album. So if you think the Beastie Boys and Eminem are the only cool white rappers, no, there's third base, Pete Nice, and the Gas Face. And so I only have it on cassette. So uh, show an 8-track or VHS tape. Uh, I don't have any 8-tracks. Um, I still have some VHS tapes for some unknown reason. And so I wanted to show something that was musical. So this is a musical called South Park Bigger, Longer, and Uncut. There you go. A tape that plays a movie. Uh, show your second, third, or 23rd tape in your collection. Well, I believe that if I alphabetized all of my cassettes, what would come third alphabetically would be the B-52s with Cosmic Thing. Uh, number one is ACDC black, Back in Black, by the way, and there was another A one in there. A double cassette or tape from a box set. 
And so, again, this is something I bought as a teenager. I think I got this at Kmart uh, with some sort of bargain bin thing. So you can see we have the Metal Killer Collection Volume 2 Part 1 and the Metal Killers Collection Volume 2 Part 2. And so basically the gimmick was they would put a couple of groups you've heard of on each one and then a bunch of other stuff. So like Part 1, you get a Black Sabbath song, you get a Twisted Sister song. Then you get songs by like Witchfinder General and Smash Gladys and other not very well known. And then the other one, Except and Diano, um, would be your most famous people on it. And here I'll show those again so you metal guys can look at those. Maybe somebody out there, maybe if this is your grail, you should let me know. And bonus, show a single. Um, so this is, again, from that alternative music magazine, uh, passing off their promos to their subscribers. So this is the Mysteries of Life sampler. So the Mysteries of Life featured Jake Smith and Frida Love Smith. Frida Love from the Blake Babies, and then both of them went on to be an antenna. Um, and they actually had sort of a semi-alternative hit with this song, Going Through the Motions. Um, and then there's on the flip side is the only stars and just to throw us back into the vinyl and CD world I also happen to have the promo seven inch single of this um, which is on clear vinyl so it's got going through the motions on one side and then two songs on the other side uh, one of them was the same song that was on like a single and then they put on a second song as well and then i have the full length album this was put out on rca 1996. um you probably haven't heard of them so obviously they never they never really broke through and became famous i think i think a cup i think an album after this they got dropped they have some independent stuff that was put out as well going through the motions really is a great song and the the B-sides on the single and on the single are not on here. So if you're a Mysteries of Life completist, uh, you need the single and the promo vinyl as well. So there you go, Jason Skills and all you other cassette fiends. There's my cassette tag. And VC Inspector, this is non-vinyl, so this is not in your jurisdiction. 